What's up top 10 fam, hope you're having an awesome day, I'm your host Eamon Hassan and welcome back to another video. Now we always love a nice ghost don't we, you know one that looks out for us, doesn't make our lights or electronics glitch weirdly, not the ones who possess us, you know like the good kind, the ones that look out for us when our friends who are alive act like snakes. So with that being said, these are the top 10 creepy ghosts that saved lives part 2. I fell down the stairs today and there was no ghost that saved my life, so there's that. Now starting us off with number 10 is I see dead people, yup I'm not even kidding you right now. So this story is from Amanda, a psychic medium who can also see dead people. She claims they're not always just around, I mean some places have more deceased in them than others. Now one morning she woke up at around 3am and saw a crowd of dead people surrounding her car. Not really really in the mood to socialize, she just asked what are you guys doing here, to which one of them replied protecting. She just replied great thanks and got ready to pick up her brother in law who was dropping her to the airport and then taking her car for the weekend. Just as she was boarding the plane, she got a text from him saying I've been rear ended by a semi truck but I am okay, what's your insurance? And he out of all people was known to really downplay things so Amanda knew it was a lot worse than what he was letting on. Her car was properly hit by a semi truck and he walked away without a scratch. Like the car was very nearly totaled but he was fine. But then the image of the dead people surrounding her car hit her and she realized they were protecting him and not her car. Because who the hell walks away from a bad accident between a semi truck and a compact car unscathed? This guy. Miraculously because these spirits protected him. Coming in at number 9 is the hit and run but not. Now this one was shared by reddit user cobwebs5 who said his dad was driving home late one night and was really tired. Major safety hazard alert right there, let's not do that. He was on an isolated stretch of road and then a man suddenly appeared right in front of his car holding his hands up trying to stop the car. Obviously the user's dad was going too fast and couldn't stop in time so he hit him and he full on heard his headlights smash and felt the body go under the wheels. He hit the brakes and got out of the car but there was no one there. The body hadn't been flung anywhere because he looked everywhere and there was also no damage to the car. The smashed headlight? completely intact. After checking thoroughly to make sure he wasn't accidentally doing a hit and run, and right after he passed the next hill, he saw a jackknifed semi that had he never stopped, he would have plowed right into. His dad was so shocked because he had seen the man he hit so clearly, he remembered what he wore, what he looked like, his age, and he had no idea who or what it was. He just concluded that a spirit somewhere he had been looking out for him and that's how he was saved. At number 8 we have teamwork. 74 year old Ian Powell was not only saved by a ghost, he was also saved by his own dog Chaz. We love good tactical assist don't we, yes we do, especially by a good doggo. Now back in 2015, Ian was watching Chaz bark at an entity that wasn't there and then acting very uneasy before leaping at him and hitting him in the temple above his right eye. For the next two weeks after that jab, Ian had persistent headaches and eventually went to the doctor and found out he had a tumour and one year to live. 0 to 100 real quick. After his operation, the doctors told Ian that the bruise Chaz had had given him was exactly where the tumour had been growing like he literally hit it right on the bullseye. They went on to say he owes that dog his life and that dogs can sense cancer sometimes anyway but the fact he was guided by this unseen entity ghost power to leap onto the exact area says a lot. Ian claims he's felt a spirit guide around him his whole life so he really wasn't surprised if that and Chaz worked together to save his life. Because now his tumour is gone due to the radiotherapy he endured and had Chaz not hit him in the head it would have gone undetected and he could have died. Filling at number 7 slot is the repeat hero part 1. So this 3 part hero is none other than the very famous jazz trumpet player Miles Davis. So he was born in Alton, Illinois and despite dying back in 1991, his ghost is still making the world a better place. Steve French, a professional glass blower and resident of Alton was asleep one night unaware that his glass blowing furnace had exploded. One of his cats had knocked over a jar of paint thinner into its top and if you have a cat, you know that cat damn well meant it. It wasn't it wasn't an accident, it was like was totally on purpose. Anyway, since the coals in the furnace were still smouldering, the container completely combusted. Had it not been for Miles's ghost, Steve along with his cat Steve French Jr and their house would have perished in the fire. Steve claimed he was woken up by the sound of his phantom trumpet and the sound was so smooth and elegant that he simply couldn't sleep through it. He woke up and saw the ghost of Miles winking at him before the smell of smoke hit him and he rushed downstairs. Thankfully he was able to salvage the situation and the day was 
was saved. To be fair, honestly, screw the story. I'm just laughing at the fact he named the cat after himself. <laughs> like, imagine if my cat was called Eamon Hassan Jr. Like, that just sounds disgusting. <laughs> now, at number six is the repeat hero part two. Now, Miles Davis's good deeds don't end with Steve and his cat, oh no. So, this case involves an Alton resident named Billy Pilgrim. Now, Billy was working on his truck in his garage when his lift failed him. And as he was working under the truck, he became stuck between the truck and the floor and was obviously unable to move because I doubt he had the strength to lift a full on truck off of him. Billy said he started hearing the overwhelming melody of some brass instrument, but he couldn't tell if it was real or he was just delirious from the pain. Probably a bit of both, if I'm honest. Now, all he does know is that he looked up to find Miles Davis staring at him exactly like the statue of him that's downtown. Miles then lifted the truck off him like it was a feather, and Billy was able to roll out from under it and not die. Thankfully, the accident only crushed his hip, and he believes Miles was kind to him because one winter he put a knitted cap on his statue since he seemed cold, and now he was returning the favor. What a happy little story, except the whole hip crushing bit. That wasn't good. Coming in at number five is the repeat hero part three, and I promise you, we have come to the last of Mars's good deeds for now. So this case happened in the 4,200 block of Albi, where a little kid was playing with his ball before, of course, disaster struck when he dropped it and it started rolling onto the road. The kid started running after it, and his mum was looking on as a 1998 Camaro was coming right towards him, but to make him into roadkill. She said a ghostly hand grabbed him and pulled him to safety on the other side of the road, but in the ghost's other hand was a trumpet. There and then she knew it was Miles Davis's ghost who saved her son, but to be honest, I'm in shock right now because why was she just staring as her son was about to get hit by a car? Like, did she know Miles's ghost was gonna swoop in and save him? Like, why didn't she run and get him? Ghosts aren't gonna save your ass every time. So what are you doing? Negligence. That's what you're doing. At number four is the gym bro. So this one was shared by redditor Memorang344 from Dallas. Now this dude went down to his basement because his home gym was there and so he went to lift weights and finally got onto the bench press. And if you don't know what a bench press is, you're basically lying on a bench with a barbell above your head and then you lift it, bring it as low to your chest as you can and then extend your arms and then repeat. <laughs> as you can see, I am a gym goer. As he was doing it, he hadn't even reached near failure in lifting but he just gave it out. The bar was at one centimeter from his throat, and he was about to drop it, but out of nowhere, something or some entity lifted the bar and set it back on the rag. Like the boy did not put any strength or push into it, it was just it just did it by itself. Dumbfounded, he ran upstairs to rationalize what had happened, but he believes that a fellow gym junkie ghost saved his life. Whatever helps you sleep at night, buddy. Filling our number three slot is the World War One throwback. So this was shared by Audi, who was a World War II veteran and fought in the Vietnam War. On the 2nd of May, 19 68, him along with a bunch of marines were in the middle of a North Vietnam attack since their troops were trying to open an invasion corridor right into South Vietnam. Audie's job was to make sure the attack failed and kill as many of the other side as possible and despite being backed by heavy artillery and airstrikes, the situation was bad. They were in danger of being overrun since the northern fighters were relentless. Now Audie fully thought he was going to die that day as they started pulling back and running through the thick brush. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a man in World War I uniform standing in an opening within a tree line. He seemed to be waving at Audi and gesturing for him to follow him and so he did. Honestly if you think you're gonna die anyway you may as well just start following people that aren't real. You know like why not? Nothing to lose at this point. By the time Audi got there the soldier was gone but the position they had was perfect. There was plenty of cover to fight behind and they managed to win that fight. During it though Audi looked to his left to see it was his own granddad dressed in the World War I uniform smiling at him. Thinking he was seeing things, he shook it off, closed his eyes, but when he opened them again, the ghost was gone. Now at number two is The Fall. This one's from Jennifer Brozek, who said in the 70s and 80s her family was in Belgium because her dad was stationed there. They lived in the 300 year old mansion, and so you can imagine the old quirks and ghost stories that came with that. Even her dad had had some paranormal experiences in the house, despite being an adamant skeptic, but I feel like everyone's skeptical until they actually experience it. Either way, one day Jennifer and her siblings decided to dare each other to 
to walk out of the second story window and see who could get the furthest across the patio top without being scared. Mind you, they were like around the 9 and 11 age range, so small and dumb are the key words here. Now, Jennifer went first, and as she was walking, ended up slipping and sliding down the incline, and she remembered hearing her sister scream her name, and then the next thing she knows, she's waking up to her face on the ground. She recalled nothing from the sliding to the fall. Now, she was quickly rushed to the hospital, and the doctors were mystified as to how she wasn't dead. People who fell from that height usually never walk again. The body tenses before it hits the ground, which causes the injuries, yet Jennifer must have been limp when she hit the ground. When they all got home, their parents started quizzing them on what had happened, and they made up the story of how she accidentally fell out of the window. Like, great, that, that's believable. Either way, her sister actually piped up saying, I know what happened. I saw her slide down the roof, trying to grab onto anything, and when she looked up, her sister saw Jennifer's face shining white and smiling. Then she went limp and let herself fall over the edge, and she emphasized that it glowed white, like her face was glowing. So I mean, the whole family stopped being skeptical after that, because clearly some spirit had possessed Jennifer and made her go limp so she could walk away with just a bruise from a 20 foot fall. You owe that ghost your life, Jennifer, and your mobility. And finally, at number one is Bobby. This one was shared back in 2010 by Robin from Savannah, Georgia. She said she'd always believed in ghosts, and she was in her first year of high school when this occurrence took place. Her home was not a happy one, so she always preferred being at school. One day, she heard her mum and her husband arguing, and when her sister intervened, the man hit her. They stayed at a hotel that night, but was back with him the next day, and it was just a repetitive toxic cycle. Despite being young, Robin knew something was just really off. She'd get home from school every day and just cry constantly, and that's when her suicidal thoughts started. The thoughts started getting worse and worse, and one night, as she was getting ready for bed, Robin felt like the next day was the day she was finally going to go through with it. But as she was trying to sleep, she felt someone rubbing her back like they were comforting her. No one was behind her, so she just ignored it, but then she heard something in her head calling her name. She kept hearing it, and then something started to actually appear, and don't get me wrong, she was scared, but not as scared as she should have been. If something was just materializing in front of her, I'd myself. The spirit started appearing more frequently over the next few days, and he was always by her side, and she felt like it was the only thing that actually cared about her. One day, her mum caught Robin talking to him and asked if she was okay. Robin then told her everything about the spirit and the suicidal thoughts, and her mum just replied saying it was all in her head. Great reply to someone who is going through mental struggles. It's all in your head. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> Robin then said his name was Bobby, and her mum started crying and left the room to call her father. Apparently, Bobby was Robin's granddad that had died years before she was born, yet he saved her life. And that's it for today's video, guys. Honestly, part two, I feel like, was more heartwarming than part one for me. Let me know if you guys have had any experiences with ghosts saving your life. I clearly haven't, because I just fell down the stairs and nothing happened to me, right? Sad, sad times. Either way, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.